Ahoy mates, it's Julie. We've got mega yachts, PWC safety tips, and amphibious wave runners, all on today's episode of The Boaters TV. Let's kick things off with our yada 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 segment, where I spot something with my little eye that is mega. One of the most powerful forces of the internet is the ability to share. It happens all over the web. People share their passion and give away their time so that others can be a part of their enjoyment. No strings attached. And we have met one such person. His name is Raphael Montagnu. He is the founder of Yachtspotter.com. A yacht enthusiast since childhood, Raphael started the website in 1997 as Le Monde des Mega Yacht, the world of mega yachts in French. His goal was to meet other enthusiasts and to share knowledge and pictures of these magnificent mammoth vessels. But the website had little success in the beginning for, as Raphael very humbly puts it, few people in the world speak French. So he switched it to English and relaunched it in 2001. This time, he says, the success was so fast, it surprised him. Today, Yachtspotter.com has pictures of over 2,000 of the world's mega yachts, which is half of all the boats over 100 feet in the world. Without any fanfare and with no advertisements, Raphael continues to share his passion with the world. The site is divided into three main parts. You'll find a news forum where visitors can discuss mega yachts, including information on whether a particular yacht is being relaunched and refit, or simply at a dock somewhere in the world. You can also find a database of what the site calls yacht cards, sort of like digital baseball cards of the boats, which feature technical information on each vessel as well as a picture. Finally, and what is probably the most unique feature, you have the yacht's position area, which reveals where the yachts are currently located or where they have been reported to have been seen. This section is fed by contributions from the site's community of users, which includes many professional crew, brokers, and even some owners. So, for those mega yacht fanatics out there who just can't seem to get enough information on these incredible floating palaces, you definitely want to check out Yacht Spotters. At the Boaters TV, we celebrate Raphael and thank him for his gift. Next up, it's time to get wet and wild as we take you from some of the largest privately owned vessels on the water to some of the smallest. And that's Personal Watercraft, or PWC. Are PWCs dangerous? According to the Boat Owners Association of the United States, or Boat US, the answer to that question depends on who is driving. The most recent figures from the U.S. Coast Guard and NMMA show that PWCs represent 9% of all registered vessels in the U.S., but account for a whopping 26% of reported boating accidents. Boat U.S. offers insurance services to its membership and noticed that its claim rates for their members is lower than the national average for other PWC operators. Bob Adriance, editor of the Boat U.S. Seaworthy magazine, says of this finding, more boating experience and boating safety education is the answer. Compared to the general boating population, our members, on average, have more of both. But you don't need years of boating experience to understand the principles of safe PWC operation. And with that, Boat US has released a list of their top 10 tips for safe personal watercraft operation. I present those to you now, accompanied by some superb PWC action footage I collected off of YouTube. Firstly, know your state's age and education requirements. PwC manufacturers recommend a minimum operator age of 16. Next, if your state doesn't require it, PwC operators should take a boating safety course, one that includes unique handling and operational characteristics. Boat US claims files show that 70% of PwC collisions are with another vessel, the majority of which are other PwCs. Try to gain on-the-water PwC experience in any area away from busy waterways, where there is plenty of room. Next, always wear a personal flotation device and attach the engine shutoff cord, also called the lanyard, to your wrist. Also know that loaning out your PwC can be risky business. A National Transportation Safety Board report indicates that roughly 84% of PwC accidents involved operators who had no boating safety education or instruction. <laughs> Another tip is to, if possible, gain some experience as a passenger on other PWCs before heading out on your own. Also, before heading out, do a thorough check of your PWC, ensuring that the throttle switches and steering work properly. And always operate defensively. 
keep a safe distance from people, objects, or other PWCs, and avoid maneuvers that make it hard for other boaters to understand where you are going. Of course, you should never carry more than the maximum passenger load. Whoop. And finally, remember that a PWC is a boat, and like every other vessel, must follow basic boating rules. Uh, don't try that one at home. By the way, Boat US offers a free PWC course online, and that's available at www.boatus.org forward slash online course. Finally today, it's time for Power Play, where we're offering up a little surf and turf action. Well, it's been out for over a year, so have you seen Gibbs Technologies' first commercially viable high-speed amphibian quad bike? Yeah, that's like a jet ski and an ATV combined. They're calling it the quad ski. You may recall back in episode 19 of the Boaters TV, we introduced you to another of Gibbs HSA, that's high-speed amphibian, vehicles, the Aquata. Well, they also have an amphibious Hummer called the Humdinger, making the quad ski the third demonstration of Gibbs HSA technology. With over 60 patented elements making up its construction, this high-powered, fully functional off-road 4x4 bike slash wave runner is capable of traveling up to 50 miles an hour on land and water, and in a touch-of-the-button James Bond maneuver, converts from one guise to the other in under five seconds. Five seconds? That's an eternity when the KGB is chasing you. For those of you looking to purchase, you better just hope a rock doesn't take out your undercarriage while four-wheeling, because a jagged hole in your hole won't make for great fun once you hit the surf. And that's a wrap on today's episode of the Boaters TV. We'll see you back here on Friday, and until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of the Boaters TV has been brought to you by the word hatch, meaning a sliding or hinged opening in the deck providing people with access to the cabin or space below, with a watertight cover, of course.